Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. My name is Eric, and in today's episode, we're gonna be talking about the Italian beef. The Italian beef sandwich is not a complex sandwich. It's seasoned beef that's tender and juicy, topped with pickled vegetables, and put into a bun housing that's strong enough to handle this delicious sandwich that's complex in its flavors and textures. It's absolutely incredible. The very first place I ever had an Italian beef was at Al's in Chicago, and I fell in love. Matter of fact, I became obsessed with this sandwich. Al's, Buono's, Frank's, Luke's, Johnny's. Portillo's was probably my favorite because I happen to live right down the road from a Portillo's. And it's no exaggeration to say that I probably ate Chicago's Italian beef sandwich every single day during the time that we were there. And when it was time to leave Chicago and I was being transferred to Dallas, Texas, I found a way to get Chicago's Italian beef sandwich delivered to my doorstep from Chicago. So. I had to figure out how to make it, and that's what I'm gonna show you today, how we make Chicago's very own Italian beef. If you don't wanna fuss around with making it yourself and you want an actual sandwich from one of the top restaurants in Chicago, stick around to the end of this video and I'll share with you how to get that delivered to your doorstep if you live in the United States. Let's make the Italian beef sandwich. The first thing we need to make for this Italian beef sandwich is our giardiniera. The giardiniera is an assortment of pickled vegetables that complement just about everything. Hot dogs, salads, pizzas, of course the Italian beef. It can be eaten as an antipasta. It's amazing. And the vegetables used in a giardiniera are ones that are typically found in your garden. So there's a lot of debate as to whether or not to add pickles and olives to a giardiniera, but if you're making this at home, you can add whatever you have. In our giardiniera, we're using red onions, we've got some celery, garlic, parsley, we're using sweet peppers and jalapenos, as well as carrots and some cauliflower. A popular brand of giardiniera, which is used by Portillo's in Chicago, is one called Marconi's. And if you don't feel like making your own, I'll put a link in the description box so you can check that out. So we just wanna process all of our vegetables into bite-sized pieces and then toss everything into a larger bin just to mix it well. Our giardiniera is gonna go through two processes. The first is gonna be a brining process, which is gonna extract some of the moisture from the vegetables. It's gonna help them retain their crunchy, crispy bite. And then the second process is gonna be a preservation process. So let's go ahead and brine our vegetables and we're just gonna create a simple brine solution. And in the description box below, I'm gonna have a link to the actual recipe with all the ingredients, all the specific measurements so that you can make this at home. So we're just gonna dissolve some salt in some water, allow that to cool, and then pour it over our vegetables. Now, we're making a lot of giardiniera because in a few days, we're gonna be feeding about 250 people Italian beef sandwiches. But the recipe in the description box below is gonna have a much more manageable quantity and you can adjust the servings as you see fit. So now that we've got our vegetables in a brine, we're gonna take that and place it into our refrigerator overnight, anywhere from 12 to 24 hours. And the following day, take your vegetables out of the fridge and give them a little taste. It should be crispy and a little salty. If you find that they're not salty enough, let them brine for another six to 12 hours. And then once you're finished, go ahead and drain all that brine. After we drain it, we're gonna rinse our vegetables down with cool water. We just wanna remove any of that brine solution from those vegetables. If you do find your vegetables to be too salty, soak your vegetables in cold water for a couple hours and that'll help draw some of that excess salt out. So once we're done rinsing, let's go ahead and let that drain while we prepare our dressing, which is gonna help preserve our vegetables. The first ingredient is red wine vinegar and we're gonna come back with the same amount of olive oil. Now, sometimes only vinegar is used or vinegar and water and other times only olive oil is used. But we're gonna use a combination of both. Once you have that ready, it's time for your spices. We're using black pepper, toasted coriander seed, chipotle powder, oregano, mustard seed. You can season this however you want. We don't need to add salt at this stage because our vegetables are already salted. So in with the spices, we're gonna give that a whisk and then we're gonna add that to our brined vegetables.
Our jardiniera is now ready and all we've got to do is place this into the fridge for 48 hours. So the seasonings can marry and the vinegar can do its job and then it'll be ready to eat. This will keep in your fridge for two to three weeks, but it freezes great as well. Now that that's done, let's talk about the beef. For today's Italian beef, we're going to be using a sirloin roast. And notice I've got one major muscle right here down the very center. So that's this piece right here. And right over here, I've got a different muscle. So that's this piece here. Now we're just going to separate those two pieces. We're then going to clean it up, truss it up, season it, and that's it. So pretty simple. And this is a great cut to use, you know, if you cook it properly. And I'm going to show you how we cook it. But you could use whatever cut you want. Rump, ribeye, eye of round, it's all good. So the first thing we're going to do, uh, like I said earlier, is we're going to separate those two muscle groups. And we're doing it primarily because we want our roast to cook evenly. But also the muscle fibers in that smaller piece run in an opposite direction. So we're going to end up having to slice that piece differently than we slice that larger one. So let's just clean that up right quick. Let me show you the muscle fibers in this particular one. And we're going to be slicing it against the grain. So this is what our smaller roast looks like. This is the direction of the muscle fiber. So we're just going to tie that up and season it here in just a minute. Our larger roast, we're going to clean this up just a tiny little bit as well. And all we're doing is removing any extra silver skin, any, uh, if the fat cap is too big, we want to remove some of that. So now that we have this cleaned up, one last little thing I'm going to do is remove that section that tapers off at the end. I'm going to try to keep my roast as evenly sized as possible. So we're just going to remove that piece and then we're just going to cook it separately. That piece is going to cook a lot faster than the larger roast. So it's better for us to remove it now. That way everything uh, gets done to the same temperature. And that's it. Our meat has been cleaned and it's been separated. We've got all of our roasts portioned the way that we want it. So let's just go ahead and tie it up and get ready for the seasonings. Tying up your roast is going to help keep its form. It's going to help it cook evenly. It's awesome. And if you want to see a video on how to tie those specific knots, be sure to leave me a thumbs up and a comment about it. As far as seasonings go, this Italian beef is going to get some kosher salt. We're going to add some black pepper, a little garlic powder, and some onion powder. We're going to come back with some oregano and some thyme, and then we're going to add some red chili flakes. And that's it. We're going to whisk that together, and now we have our seasoning mix. And don't forget, the recipe is in the description box below. To season the meat, we're going to coat our meat with olive oil. We just want to make sure that olive oil is on all sides of our beef. And once your beef has been completely coated in olive oil, you're going to generously sprinkle your seasoning mix on all sides of that meat. Once your meat has been seasoned, let it sit at room temperature for about an hour before you place it in your oven. This is going to take the chill out of the meat. It's going to help it cook a lot more evenly. And we're going to place a meat thermometer inside one of our smaller roasts, one that I think will be finished a lot sooner. This is going to monitor the temperature while it's cooking, which is absolutely critical when making roast beef. We're going to set our oven to 450 degrees Fahrenheit or 232 degrees Celsius, and once it preheats, we're going to place our roasts in the oven. You're going to notice that the way we cook these sirloin roasts is by dry heat only. Often you'll see people do a dry heat, then a braise, but the way we're doing it is high heat for about 20 minutes, and then we're going to reduce the heat until we reach our internal temperature. So once our roasts are in the oven, we're going to set a timer for 20 minutes. After that 20 minutes is finished, we're going to leave the oven doors closed. All we're going to do is lower the temperature to 325 F or 163 Celsius until we reach an internal temperature of 125 Fahrenheit or 51, 52 degrees Celsius. So what's going to happen after we remove these roasts from the oven is that temperature is going to continue to rise by at least five, maybe even 10 degrees. So cover your roasts let them rest. Don't feel tempted to cut into it just yet. We want those juices to reincorporate into the beef. It's going to give us a really tender, juicy roast beef. So let it rest for 30 to 40 minutes before you cut into it. Personally, when we make this particular roast beef for Italian beef sandwiches, we don't even cut into it. Once it's cooled completely down, we'll wrap it in some cling film 
and then place it in the refrigerator. This last and final process in the preparation of the meat is gonna help chill our meat, which is going to make it a whole lot easier when it comes to slicing, because we want super thin slices for this Italian beef sandwich. It's now the next day. This is our roast beef. And remember, the grain on this particular cut is running in this direction, which means we're gonna slice our meat running this direction. So we're gonna cut our meat into three portions and then slice it so that we're slicing against the grain. So let's go ahead and cut into this roast beef. And the final temperature after it rested for 30 to 40 minutes was about 132 degrees Fahrenheit, which is absolutely perfect. <laughs> Our beef at this point has been sliced, it's juicy and tender, and I'm gonna go ahead and chop it up. Now this is an optional step, you don't have to do this, but I like the mouthfeel of chopped roast beef in this Italian beef sandwich. But like I said, totally optional, you don't have to do this. Let's look at the final ingredient, which is the bread. And in my opinion, the best bread for the Italian beef sandwich comes from the Toronto Baking Company in Chicago, but that may be a little hard to get your hands on. So I got my hands on a ciabatta loaf, and a hoagie, and what I'm looking for is something that's soft but still has enough structure to hold this sandwich together because this is a messy sandwich. And between these two loaves, we chose the hoagie as it held up much better in the tests that we gave it. So those are the three components to the Italian beef sandwich. Let's assemble them. The first thing we have to do is heat up our roast beef. We don't wanna heat it up too hot, so we have a water bath set to 140 degrees Fahrenheit or 60 degrees Celsius with a bin of au jus in it. And the seasonings for the au jus can be found in the description box below. Heating our roast beef in this controlled temperature au jus guarantees that our meat stays juicy and tender, and that's exactly what we're looking for. So we're gonna go ahead and add some roast beef into our au jus, and within a couple of minutes, I say three to four minutes max, our beef is gonna to come to temperature. But what's also gonna happen is that Aju is gonna add another dimension of flavor to our roast beef. It's gonna be amazing. If you don't wanna mess around with all this, you can just heat your Aju on a low heat, heat your Italian beef in the liquid, and then serve it up. Just make sure you don't overcook it because you don't want that tender, juicy beef to dry out and get tough. Let's make the Italian beef sandwich. Our bread has been warmed, and I'm just gonna smash the seam side of our sandwich. That's gonna keep it from splitting open. At this point, we are just gonna pile it with that delicious, juicy, tender roast beef that's been perfectly seasoned, and I wanna make sure I get a lot of it in there along with the juice. And now we're gonna come back with that giardiniera, and I wanna make sure that I get those coriander seeds, the olive oil, some of that vinegar in there, and this is what our Italian beef sandwich looks like. It smells amazing. It looks amazing. And let me tell you, this is a messy sandwich. A good rule of thumb when eating Italian beef is to go to the sandwich. But you know what? We're gonna, we're gonna live on the wild side. We're gonna bring the sandwich to us. Here we go. Those pickled vegetables are absolutely incredible. They add a little sour, a lot of texture, coriander, chipotle powder. This sandwich is so good. <laughs> ah, the flavor is incredible. The, the bread is just soaking up that au jus from the beef, almost as if it was baptized. And it's soft and gooey, but not so gooey it makes me want to puke, you know, I can't stand that. This is a great sandwich and it's one to definitely try. If you want to try this sandwich, but you don't want to fuss around with the beef or the bread or anything like that, check out the description box. I'm going to post a link to one of Chicago's very own restaurants that serves amazing Italian beef. 
they will deliver it to your doorstep in under 48 hours and you can have uh, the authentic experience at your home. Absolutely amazing. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. And if you got anything out of this video, a thumbs up would be helpful. If you're new to our channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and that notification bell. We've got the Philly cheesesteak coming up. We've got the New Orleans muffalata. We've got all kinds of really cool videos. We post new stuff each week. We'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. I've probably eaten more Italian beef than most Chicagoans. Ch Chicagoans? Chicagoans. Chicagoites. I don't know how you say it.